In the last episode, we reviewed the general process of building physical models using SketchUp and V-Ray, and emphasized the importance of completion. In this episode, let's look at how to improve the lighting and the angle to get a more perfect drawing that can impress you. Let's start with the lighting. Please note that we don't have a complete set of lighting parameters for you, because each model and each scene is unique. If you want to get a set of parameters for everything, that's just impossible. In each of the following examples, we have adjusted the number, intensity, and the angle of the light many times. The key is the correct logical thinking. Strong contrast between light and dark can emphasize the model's edges and increase the geometric readability of the model which is a common form of physical model expression. In this case, the lighting arrangement is simple. You only need to put a V-ray artificial light in the direction of the light. In my opinion, rectangle light is the best option because it's the easiest to control its intensity, direction, and the soft and hard shadow. As for the direction in which the light is placed, it's not absolute but it should be able to cast a shadow that does not block the design while clearly distinguishing the light and dark sides of the architecture. This is Tato Endo's work, Koshino House. We rotate a V-ray rectangle light around the model every 5 degrees until it rotates a whole circle. A total of 72 angles of images are rendered for your reference. I believe you can make your own choice. Just don't set the lights too spooky like a haunted house. It can also be presented in a warm atmosphere. This cute little house is from Pinterest. It's a good example. Of course, it's a real physical model, not a rendering. Let's see how to achieve this kind of warm and harmonious soft light atmosphere. Before setting up the lights, you need to know how rectangle lights control soft and hard shadows. For some people, this is probably a hidden feature of rectangle lights. Compared with the model, at the same position, the smaller the size of the rectangle light, the harder the shadow it casts. Otherwise, it's soft. But note that when the size of the rectangle light becomes smaller, the intensity will also decrease accordingly. In addition, V-Ray also provides an option to converge the energy in certain direction, or, in other words, directionality. When the value is zero, the light is evenly distributed in all directions. As the value becomes larger, the light source will gradually converge until it becomes a parallel beam with the same size as the rectangle light. This will also make the shadow become hard, but in some extreme cases, you might get a very weird effect. We usually use the first method, unless you want special effects. To render a bright scene, we need a bright background. So we added a background board similar to a studio. Although it's not absolutely necessary, there's no harm in knowing a little about the basic lighting of a studio. You can try to search for three-point lighting to find more tutorials. With the knowledge of three-point lighting, we can add three or more lights. Usually, for example, set lights are used to brighten the environment. Key lights are used to illuminate the main object. Fill lights are used to soften the shadow. And back lights are used to separate the background and the outline of the model. But in fact, we don't have to be so strict about it. After all, we are not making movies. In this case, we actually set the lights like this. Use a huge rectangle light as the environment light and key light. And then add a light on both left and right sides of the model. The intensity of one light is strong and another one is weak. Enable material override and the rendering looks like this. Obviously, no matter how many lights you add, the purpose is to avoid overexposure on the bright side. Too much black on the dark side 
and to make the whole lab environment mellow and balanced. We added two maps to the model, wood and concrete. The rendering looks good, doesn't it? Since V-Ray artificial lights make large models look small, do we have to use artificial light for physical models? Of course not. Environment light can also do that. One tip of using environment light to render a physical model is to use entourage models properly to set off a small-scale architectural model. In this case, we put the model on a windowsill and added some small objects such as teacup, T-square, scale bar, and wooden strips to make the model look small. The prototype of this example is also from Pinterest. It's a real physical model, not a render. Disable sunlight and environment background in V-Ray. We use HDRI to illuminate the scene. We can see that the render with environment background looks less artificial and it is softer and more natural than artificial light. After the lighting, let's talk about perspective. For physical models, the essence of perspective is the depth of field. It makes the render look closer to the effect achieved by physical camera. Usually, models are small, and the shooting distance is small. Proper depth of field can emphasize the model and create a spatial sense. As you can see, it looks mediocre, without the depth of field, but it looks awesome with it. Open Asset Editor in Settings, click Camera, and enable Depth of Field. Use the Pick Point tool and click where you want to focus on. That will be the clearest spot in the picture. Then adjust the value of defocus. The bigger the value is, the stronger the depth of field will be. All these works can be done in the real-time rendering. With the depth of field, it feels like an improvement, doesn't it? Let's switch to the previous example. Choose a closer perspective and add the depth of field. The result looks excellent. Are you able to do it now? However, after working hard on the lighting and perspective, you will find a tricky problem. That is, there seems to be no details in the model at all. There should be scratches, damage, and stains on physical models due to the cutting, grinding, and pasting processes. These imperfections not only make the model more realistic, but also give the model a special atmosphere. In the next episode, we will talk about more details of physical model rendering. That will be the best part of the three episodes. So don't miss it! This is SketchUp Rabbit Hole. Subscribe to us and don't forget to hit the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos.
You will get more interesting tutorials and examples of things that you've never seen before. We are special. See you next time.